Okay, next for our task number three with multicast BGP, what we're going to have to do now is to configure R2 using the local preference attribute to make all routers in AS100 refer itself to reach R6 uh, subnet 6660 slash 24, which is a subnet we just created in the previous task. And then we're going to do another ping test to see how our multicast routing gets affected now that our unicast routing topology has changed. And then we're going to try to fix that using our multicast BGP. Okay, so just to kind of illustrate that on the drawing a little bit. So as I mentioned earlier, currently R5 and R1 is taking this path right here to get to the 6660 subnet. What we're going to do now is configure R2 to set the local pref for that particular route so that R1 and R5 actually prefer R2 going out to R6. And we do that so that we can change the unicast routing topology for that subnet and we're going to see how that effect on multicast routing that we have completed previously. Okay, so we start our configuration on R2. First, out we're going to define a prefix list to match the subnet 6660. That's the name, and we're going to permit or match 6660/24. Okay, then we do a route map call from R4. Guess R2 is receiving route from R4. Permit 10 match IP address prefix list. Copy and paste the name of the prefix list, and we're going to set the local preference. By default, it's 100, so we need to set something higher. So we're going to set that to 200. And then we're still going to have to permit everything else to come in with no match statement. And now under the router BGP 100, with a neighbor of 123.4, we're going to tie that to a route map from R4 with the inbound as far as the direction. Okay, and then we have to clear our PBGP to put the route map or our route filter in effect. Do a route refresh in the inbound direction. Okay, so now if you go back to R5 and do a show IP BGP 6660, you can see that local pref has been changed from 100 to 200, and R5 is now pointing to R2 for the subnet. Okay, if you're trying to do a reverse path check one more time, you can see that it comes back and claims there's no route exists just because now that our multicast or PIM topology is different from the unicast routing. So currently, R5 is pointing to R2 in the unicast routing table, but there's obviously no PIM neighbor off of the R5 interface towards R2. Okay, and that's why the RPF check comes back fail. So now if you do a, let's do a debug IP PIM on R5 as well as R1. So again, if you do a show IP RPF, you can see that one fail as well. So let's do a debug IP PIM. And then going back to our switch one, let's uh, do a ping. And let's go back to R1, which is the rendezvous point. So as soon as we do a ping from switch one, it sends the register message to R1. As you can see right here, received a V2 registered from R6, and it sent a register stopped. And you can see right here, the RPF lookup fail to the source 6666. Okay, and that's because currently R1 is preferring R2, which is the unicast routing table, to get to the R66660 or 6666. But instead, the PIM message is coming in this way, and that's why R1 is throwing up a warning and said it's failing the RPF checked, and it's just going to totally ignore that packet. Okay, so what we're currently having is a discrepancy between the unicast routing and multicast routing topology. Us or R1 and R5 expect the multicast traffic sourcing from 6666 to come from R2, according to his unicast routing table. But since it's currently coming from R3, the simplest fix that you can do is to configure a static or multicast static route on R1 and R5 and kind of force it just like a regular static routes to point it to R3 for a 6666 right here. And that way, once the multicast traffic comes in from R3 on R1, it said it once again passed the reverse path check. The same goes with R5. But just like anything else, that's we uh, prefer not to use a static routes if we don't need to. So what we're going to do next is to instead leverage the support for multicast on the BGP. So the way it's going to work is, since we already have the BGP peering between all these four routers, we're going to, what we're going to do is just to activate the support for multicast on these routers and then specifically advertise 
the subnet 6660. And then we can just basically treat that as a totally separate routing domain that's exclusively used for multicast routing. Okay, so let me kind of stop debug for a sec. So now we're going to have to go through all those four routers and enable multicast BGP. We're going to start off from the top, which is R6. The way to do that, we go under the routing BGP 200, and then we have to specify or get under the address family and it's IPv4 and you can see that we have options of multicast, unicast or VRF. Since we're dealing with multicast we'll specify multicast and since we already have the neighbor configured which is 2R3 all we need to do is just to activate that neighbor to start using the multicast address family. Okay on top of that we also need to advertise the network which is 6660 mass 255.255.255.0 just to advertise that subnet into the multicast pgp and that should be all we need to do and if you do show ip bgp ipv4 and then specify multicast instead of unicast routing domain you can see all the most of the options are still there with the multicast routing so nothing's really changed as far as the configuration and show commands but now we're just operating under the multicast domain and you can see that the only route that's currently available in the multicast routing table is the 6660 that we just advertise so now we have to go over to r3 and activate multicast bgp on that can address family ipv4 multicast and then it has a neighbor to R6 already, so we just need to activate as well as the neighbor to R1. Activate. Okay. Show IP BGP. Let's go ahead and check the route that's being received along the way. You can see the R3 has already received that route from R6. Okay, now going over to R1. Get the router BGP 100, address family, IPv4 multicast. Neighbor pointing towards R5, activate, and then point towards R1 or R3 rather, activate. Okay, show IP BGP, IPv4, multicast. There you go, here's our routes, and then finally on R5, router BGP 100, address family IPv4, multicast, neighbor 01 activate. So the route should have now been propagated from R6 all the way down to R5 and there you go. R5 is now seeing that in the multicast routing table so what it means is if you do another IP or RPF check which failed earlier on that subnet you can see now that the Multicast routing table actually now overrides the unicast routing table as far as using those for RPF check. And you can see now that the RPF checked is pointing towards R1, which is exactly what we want. And you can see the RPF type is MBGP, which stands for the multi protocol BGP. And that's basically the indicator of the source of where that particular route is coming from. If you compare that to what we have earlier up here, when we still leverage the unicast routing table, which is what happened by default, you can see the RPF type is shown as a unicast with BGP 100. So now that we are actually leveraging the MPBGP, that's what uh, it shows up on the RPF type. Same thing with R1. If you do another RPF check, you can see now it's pointing towards R3 because it's where it's learning the multicast BGP routes from for 6660. Again, RPF type is MBGP. Right, but let's do a quick show IP BGP and look at that route in the unicast routing table. You can see that it's still this route right here pointing towards R2. So now what we have is a separate routing topology between the unicast routing and the multicast routing. All right, so now that we have a successful check for all of our reverse path forwarding check on both R1 and R5, what it means is if we go back to our switch one and do another ping to the multicast address, we are now once again 
receiving a reply from R5. All right, so just to do a quick recap, so what we have is our unicast routing topology for that subnet that looks like this. As far as the route being learned by R1 and R5 are being preferred. But for our, since we configure the multicast BGP, our multicast or uh, BGP routing topology looks uh, pretty much like this. And that lines up with our PIM connections and everything. And that's why it's, uh, it's currently working. Okay, and that's how you can use the multicast BGP to build a multicast routing topology that's independent from the unicast routing topology. And that completes our task number three. So you can see that configuring a multicast BGP is pretty straightforward, especially if you already have the BGP neighbor configured. All you need to do is just activate that under the multicast address family for IPv4. And all the commands and features and capability that you can normally do with the unicast routing is still available for the multicast routing as well. All right, so that wraps up our video on BGP multicast. You can visit the website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmints.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.